show you now a very, very beautiful technique of the romantic uh, style mandolin. It's uh, the harp arpeggio. <laughs> So it's a very typical technique and also the violin has this beautiful technique but on the mandolin it's uh, uh, f very very much used by composers of the Romantic era and many preludes of Raffaele Calace but also Monnier, Carlo Monnier wrote Obranzoli, so many, many composi uh, composers and Pitina as well. And so I think it's time that we are starting to learn this beautiful technique too. And uh, basically I would first um, suggest again to mute your strings and what we are doing is the pick is 90 degrees and we go, we slide down the string, down, 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 and then up, 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 up. So it's actually only one movement and then a second one. All the others are connected. So don't do like each separate and then especially this one. You have, you have to just feel the weight of your hand and of your arm. You do the down and it's kind of, you know, you feel that you go down and then you feel you just take it back. Yeah. I was a little bit overdoing it so I can show you better but of course your arm is here has having a balance you don't move the arm you just move a little bit the meat and in between the meat and the bones you have some flexibility and this is where you can move a little bit but uh, not with the whole arm and I do a little bit this um, roading so I go with an upstroke more close to the fingerboard to make the upstroke sound softer because the upstroke, the first one, is usually the melody. So when you have a chord, yeah, sounds better than if I would go in the opposite direction. So I'm going against the clock. So let's do it slow. And again, you could use your metronome here. Tuck, tuck, or you put it tuck, 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 or tuck, 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 tuck. Yeah, you can put it on each note or on each second note as more. Uh, you get advanced then I would put the beat not on every note so further away so on the first beat and then again on the fifth note on this and on this yeah but at the beginning maybe it's helpful to have more beats so pick your tempo and when you feel comfortable raise the tempo so my plectrum, my pick is a little bit moving in between my fingers because I'm not holding it so tight. But this doesn't mean that you uh, should move your hand. It might look that it's moving, but it's not my hand doing it too much. It's really more that my pick is so soft. And I kind of feel also that I'm doing a rest stroke when I do the up stroke. a little cadenza with a D, uh, sorry, G chord, D chord, D7 and G, yeah? And so on, yeah? You can do it twice or three times. For sure you should practice this a little bit, um, yeah, first in the pizzicato, then with the cadenza, before you start playing actually this beautiful piece which I picked out for you. Uh, it's the exercise number 320 from Raffaele Calacci's method book. And um, 
here it's already a little bit more advanced. You have the G, not really advanced in the meaning of advanced class, but the chords are more um, interesting now than at the beginner class. Yeah. So the second, you have here the third and the first finger, then back to the G. Then you have here the E minor, yeah, and then you move the finger. So I would really suggest that you first practice the technique in the pits, then you'd only do the chords maybe four times because it's also written four times in the piece. And then you do so that your left hand is really prepared. Yeah, so you have to put the first finger on the D and the B here. Yeah. Octave and then the G. And then you move the second finger. Oh, it's only two times. Uh, then you go back to the. Yeah, let's do this bar again. Maybe we start one, two, three, four, the fourth line again. You have this chord. Remember this, and then you put the fourth finger on the D, and then you go back to the G and G, E, and D. So here on each string, a different finger. You move to the C note, then you move this from the E to the yeah, E flat, and then back to the G chord and back into the first position. I play this chord A, C, and G, but some people like to put their second finger. I cannot do this really good. So I'm putting my third finger under and then switch. And then just octave. And the pizzicato. This pizzicato, you put your hand here. I will talk about it later. You can also just do for now this. Okay, let's do it. Um, I will play now the piece for you. Also to shorten the piece. It's enough if you play the first chord, second, and then the E minor, and then you just end there. Yeah, it's more important that you train and you start to train your right hand. Um, and the length of the piece um, depends how much you have been exposed already to play chords. So you, when you come from, from, for example, from bluegrass, then you are already used to play a lot of chords and then you will feel this 
for the left hand is not so difficult. But if you are really a beginner uh, and the mandolin is your first instrument, then uh, this could be a little bit hard to play through the whole piece. And that's why just shorten the piece and then you can come always later back to the piece. <laughs>